Hi everyone, it's great to have all of you here. Uh, I'm Jacek, uh, I write and teach Scala at Software Mill, and today I'm uh, going to take you on a journey with Enums and how they have evolved from Scala 2 through different approaches, different libraries, to what we have in Scala 3, and how we can approach Enums in Scala 3. So for this journey, we'll use a short checklist, uh, which I think is the, the, a set of the most common use cases that you have with Enums, and we'll go through uh, each of the approach, uh, approaches and see whether, like, how they fit this checklist. So the first element on our checklist is parameters, and this means whether our Enum, our implementation of an enumeration, uh, can take any additional data, can store any additional data, can we have additional fields, additional methods, so to include kind of a custom logic in this enumeration. Uh, the next thing is uh, exhaustiveness check, and this is about pattern matching on our in, uh, enumerations, uh, and to be able to check at compile time whether we have covered all the cases. So if we, if we want to see if all the, all the cases are there, uh, we do pattern match, and we want the compiler to warn us if anything is wrong. Thank you. Uh, the third case is uh, looking up a value by name. So this can be useful, for example, if you store the enum in a database as a string, then you load it from the database, you need to deserialize it to, to the actual instance of an enum, uh, and uh, you, you want this conversion to be there so, the, so that you don't need to write it by hand. And the last one is looking up all values. So you write your code and you, for example, you need to populate a dropdown uh, on some front end, and then you need to have access to all the values so that they can be there. Uh, so this is the checklist, and uh, we'll start with uh, uh, vanilla Scala 2, so what we were able to do in Scala 2. And in Scala 2, if you wanted to create an enumeration, you would uh, create an object. Uh, in our case, we'll be working with directions, like think compass directions, so north, south, east, west. So this will be our simple domain. Uh, so this extends uh, an enumeration in Scala 2. Uh, and then you need to define the values. Uh, so we'll have north, south, east, and west, uh, and they would be a value. So the value here is a function that we are calling that creates an instance of, uh, of each of those enums. So now, coming to our checklist, first of all, we'd like to see whether this can have any additional parameters. So if you look at how value is implemented, you can see that there are different variants of the value. One takes an int, the other takes a string. There is the final one that takes both an int and a string. But those ints and string are rather internal to the value. So they are internal to the enum implementation. This is kind of a name for the value and an index. So theoretically, if you really insisted, uh, you may store an int and a string inside the value, but nothing else. So th those are the two fields that you have at hand. They are internal, internal. You can use them for your own purposes. But unfortunately, you're not able to add anything else. You are not able to add a method, for example, for, to, to, to an instance of your enum that would, that would do something. So this is pretty much limited. Uh, so we'll write a note here that the parameters are not supported. Now, what about exhaustiveness check? So here we have uh, our simple function that does the pattern matching. It does not compile yet because it uh, uses some trick that you are able to do in, in Scala 2. Because normally what you would need to write here to be able to, to access the type would be uh, direction.value. But if you use a type alias here, so if you write uh, type uh, direction equals value, then we're able to use the direction here. And with an import, uh, we, can, uh, we can simplify this to something like this. So if you, if, you take, uh, if you write a method that takes a direction, you actually write the direction as a type. But this is just a, a type alias for the direction dot direction. So now if we compile this, What we would expect, well, we only covered a single case here. So we only covered north, but we didn't cover anything else. So we would like the compiler to warn us that, hey, something is wrong. You didn't cover all the values, and this might be tricky in production. Unfortunately, everything has compiled with no warnings at all. So this, doesn't, this is not supported. So the exhaustiveness check is not there for the Scala 2 enums. Uh, what about looking at value by name? Well, this is built in, so we can write uh, direction uh, with name and then uh, provide a name here. Uh, we can print it uh, and see whether this works. Uh, yeah, so you can see that uh, it printed this out. We have that uh, triple question mark here, so this is why the exception happened. 
But what happens if we try to deserialize a value that is uh, not valid? So if we try to deserialize A, for example. There is another exception, but this is now not from the triple question mark. But this is a no such element exception, which means that the value was not there. So we can, uh, let's say, unsafely access the value by name, but there is no built-in way to safely access, safely try to deserialize a value. Of course, we can implement uh, this ourselves because we can uh, we can write a, a function here that uh, can be called, for example, with name option. Uh, it takes a name, that's a string, and we are using the built-in try from Scala to uh, to wrap the original with name, and then we convert it to option. And now, if we use with name option instead of with name here, this is going to give us a none. Uh, which is expected, so this is the safe way that we can use to, to access the value. Now, looking up all values uh, is also built in because there is this, uh, this value method, so we can uh, print this out as well. Uh, and you can see that this gives us some uh, a, a type that looks like a set. It's actually called value set, but this, this, this resembles a set, so this is what we would expect here. Now, there is one important issue with, uh, with the enums in Scala 2, with the enumeration. Let's uh, consider such case. So, we have our direction enum that we have just implemented, and we have another one. And now, we want to, to write a method, it, here it will be called foo, that uh, takes the direction and does anything. And now, we want to write another method that uh, doesn't take the direction, but it takes uh, other dot value. And it turns out that it doesn't compile. Although like, it, it, it looks like the values are different because we have defined two different enumerations. But it turns out that after the types are erased, the type, the type is actually the same. So uh, whatever number of enums you implement, like whatever number of classes you have that extend enumeration in Scala 2, the value type would be the same uh, across all of them. So this is, this is an issue when you want to overload methods like, the, like here, for example. So this is the tricky part, and you, you need to be aware of that. So, summing up the, the Scala 2 default implementation of enumeration, well, first of all, we don't have parameters. So, uh, the, the enum type, the enumeration type cannot take any additional data. We don't get the exhaustiveness check, so the compiler won't tell us if the pattern match was not exhaustive, so if we only covered one of four cases, like here, for example. We have a built-in method for deserializing the value from a name, but only in an unsafe variant that throws an exception if there are any issues. We can pretty easily implement another one that is safe and returns an option. And we have a built-in mechanism for fetching all the values. So let's see if we can do any better, still, uh, still with Scala 2. So another approach that you might be familiar with is using ADTs or algebraic data types uh, to, to implement this. So we would start, if we wanted to start very simple, this would be a sealed trait uh, that would be called direction. Uh, and then uh, we'll have a companion object to have like a naming for, like a scope for our names. I'm writing Scala 3, so let's put a colon here. And it will be an object direction, of course. And now we have uh, uh, case objects. So there would be case object N that extends the direction. And three more cases for uh, south, east, and west. So this is what it would look like. So we're coming back to our checklist again. And the first item on our checklist are the parameters. So since this is nothing more than an algebraic data structure, we are free to uh, replace the trait here with an abstract class. And now we can add anything here, any parameters here. So in our case, it would be the name of the direction. That would be a string uh, and a bearing. That is an int, and the bearing is then the degrees on the compass. So if you look at the compass, there is like from 0 to 359 degrees, because north is 0. Uh, so of course, we need to update those. Uh, so uh, we'll update north with uh, 0 degrees, then the other ones. Uh, so it's south with 180. It's east with 90 and it's west with 270. So this is our st structure or the data type extended with, with some fields. 
And if we have fields, we can also add a method here. So our method here would be called uh, compass point. And a compass point is a like old fashioned way to do navigation. So in the older times, people didn't use the bearings or the degrees on the compass, but they divided the, the entire compass into 30, 32 sectors. And the compass point is one of the 32 sectors. And this is how you compute it. So with, uh, with this compass point, what we can do, well, we can, we can print this out. So we can say direction and compass point, for example, and print it. And it works, which means we have some, we can have some state in our enum. This gives us the exception, so let's delete it. Now the exhaustiveness check. So this is a similar pattern matching that we did before. Uh, but now if, you, if, if we switch back to the build tab and try to compile this again, we'll see that there is a warning that the match might not, might not be exhaustive. And the compiler tells us exactly that we've only matched on n, we didn't match on the other values, so this is what we would expect. And now we have uh, compile time safety that we don't skip anything. And if you use a compiler plugin that converts such warnings into errors, then your code wouldn't even compile if you haven't covered the cases. And this is much more useful to get this information at compile time than at some random moment in production at runtime. Now what about looking up a value by name? So there isn't anything like, uh, like the with name method that we had previously, of course, because this is our own hierarchy, so we, we just need to put it there. So we need to, to add some boilerplate manually to be able to do this. And the same applies to uh, fetching all values. Well, we, 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 have, we have listed the cases ourselves, but we don't have a field in the direction that gives us all the values, so it, we would also need it, so let's start with that. Uh, so we can uh, write uh, val uh, values. Uh, that would be a set of n, s, east, and west. And this is the simplest way to do it. P perhaps you can think of like um, better approaches, and we'll get to this later. Uh, and now if we want to be able to fetch a value by name, probably we don't want to compute it every time, so uh, we'll, ha we'll compute it once, and we'll, we'll have a map, uh, which would be called by name. Uh, we'll construct this map by taking the values and uh, mapping them. So for every direction that we have, we'll take the to string variant of it, which gives us the, the actual name. So for north, it would be n, etc. And we are mapping this to the actual direction and converting this to map. And now we can add another public method that would be called uh, with name, similarly to what we have before. And this is uh, by name. And here we are using the apply method of the map, which uh, either gives us the value or throws an exception. So this would, as you might guess, uh, this would be the, the unsafe variant. Uh, so again, if we run it with, uh, with an existing value, everything should be fine. And this is the case, actually. If we run it for a non-existent value, we would expect an exception because this is the apply method on a map. So this still works uh, as expected, but we, we also want to have the safer variant. Uh, in this case, it's easy because we can just add the with name option method and just replace by name the, the map apply with map get because map get returns you return, returns the option. So this is actually what we want to use. So now when we replace the call to with name with a call to with name option, we should get an on. Yeah, and this is what we expected. And now we already covered getting all the values, so we already implemented this with uh, this set here. So of course the solution here is, uh, is obvious, so we just say direction.values, so we can print them. And we have a set because we implemented the set ourselves, so no surprise here. So going through our checklist again, uh, we can see that uh, this is better than the default enumeration implementation because we, have, we can have kind of state in our enumeration. We can add extra data, define extra methods, so that might be useful. Uh, the critical part is also here, the, which is the exhaustiveness check when pattern matching. So the compiler is going to tell us if we missed something at compile time, which is great. However, we needed to add the boilerplate here and here. So for fetching the value by name, either in a safe or unsafe way, and also for uh, fetching all the values. So this is not perfect. And actually, uh, someone had an idea to like, have, get rid of this boilerplate or sh uh, ship it as a library. Uh, and this was done uh, using a library called uh, enumeratum. So this would be our, our next step. I just need to copy this.
Okay. So the implementation for enumeratum is empty, and this is not a coincidence, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste the previous implementation with uh, algebraic data types. And I just told you that uh, we want the library to deal with the boilerplate for us. So I, I removed the boilerplate I added myself. Of course, this stopped compiling now because the, the methods are not there. And now to bring enumeratum into play, uh, we just need to import it. So we import enumeratum dot underscore. And then there are two places where we need to modify our code. So the first place where we modify is, is here. So for this uh, seal abstract class, we need to say that uh, this is going to extend uh, a type called enum entry from enumeratum. So this is the first place where, uh, where enumeratum jumps in. And the other is here. And the, uh, the direction, so the, the, the actual object, uh, needs to extend an enum from the enumeratum uh, with a generic type, which is the direction. And now the compiler tells us that there are still some methods to implement. Uh, so let's do it. I'm not sure why it puts it here, like in the third position. So I, I just move it here so that the values stay the same. And here we are using a built-in uh, method, which is actually a macro called find values. And this is uh, going to do the boilerplate that we previously did manually, uh, which was implementing the, the set of all values. So here, this is a macro. So at compile time, the, uh, a set like, like the one that we, or a sequence that like the one that we implemented before would be generated. And now you can see that uh, everything started compiling. Uh, we can double check whether it's, uh, it still works apart from compiling. So this works as expected. You can see that the type here is different. So like in, in the built-in enumeration, we got an, uh, a value set. In our own implementation, we got a set. Here we got a vector. So, but th fortunately, those if, if you really want a set semantics, you can easily convert it. So this is like a, a minor issue here. Other than that, everything from our checklist is covered. So b because we didn't even t t change our test cases. So the parameters are there. The exhaustive pattern map check is also there. Uh, we got the boilerplate for fetch safely or unsafely fetching the value by name, and we also got the boilerplate for fetching all values. So this looks pretty good, and it actually covers all the cases, uh, we, 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 which is nice. But this is an external library, so uh, in, in Scala 2, if you want, uh, wanted like something close to a perfect enum implementation, you would probably go with uh, enumeratum. But Scala 3 has improved much more here, and one of the main, well, maybe not main, but major changes in Scala 3 was how, how enums are approached there. So let's now see what, it would li what this code would look like in Scala 3. So in Scala 3, there is a new keyword called enum, and we just say direction here. Uh, and to define the, the cases of the enum, we use the familiar case keyword, and we just define the cases. And that's it. So this is the, the simplest notation of an enum, so we, we, which covers like uh, almost everything. So th this, is, this is a short notation, and that's, that's nice about it. So enum keyword plus the one that you already know, which is a case. So of course, we are getting back to our checklist, and the first item are parameters. So for parameters, it's uh, actually pretty similar to what we have had previously. So I'm just going to copy paste it here. So in case of defining parameters, the enum type behaves like a normal Scala class, so we can define constructor parameters here. And now, of course, this doesn't work, the, 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 the simple case notation, because the, 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 the cases need, need to have those parameters defined, so this, is, this needs to be extended a bit. And what I'm going to do is also to copy-paste it from the implementation that we used for ADTs or, or uh, enumeratum. <laughs> That's better. Okay, let me remove the empty lines before I do teach you one simple trick to make it work in Scala 3. So to make it work in Scala 3, you just need to remove the, the, the object here. So uh, those are not case objects anymore, but those are just cases. But uh, you can notice that everything else stays the same. So what I did was only deleting the object key keyword and that, that's it. So now how the, the way you define it, those is, uh, is, is very similar. Now if I wanted to add the, the compass point instance method, I can just also add it here because, well, enum is 
but you can already see that it is pretty much like a class. So if I have, can have constructor parameters, I can also have methods defined in this class. So that's, that's perfect. So parameters are covered. Uh, we can uh, restore our test case here. This is S actually. So the, val the output value would be different. It should be 180. Sorry, 16, because this is the different, different notation. Uh, now exhaustiveness check. So the method for checking the exhaustiveness is still the same, so we are using it all across all the test cases. Uh, so we are getting back to the build tab and compiling this again. And you can see that we are still getting the warning. So still the compiler is warning us that, hey, you've only covered one of the four cases, so you can get into trouble. Now looking up a value by, na by name. So previously we had that the method was called with name, and actually this is the convention that uh, the enumeration in Scala 2 is using. This is also the convention that Enumeraton decided to follow. Uh, here it's a little bit different because here the method is called value f of, and uh, this can recall you the enum from, from the JDK, so from, from vanilla Java. And there's no coincidence, as you will see in a short time. Uh, so here we can, uh, we can take n, for example, and we can print this out. So this works as expected. So now we are taking the other case where the value does not exist. And now this is, I would say, also expected because we are, it, it's also a different exception. Previously it was no such element exception. Now this is illegal argument, whatever, it still doesn't work. So if, uh, if we wanted to have a safe variant of, uh, of this, unfortunately this is not built in. So this is uh, something we, uh, we might want to implement. So we'll get back to it shortly. Uh, let's just see whether getting all the values is supported. Unfortunately, it is. So again, this is, uh, there is this uh, values method, which also resembles the Java enum, and this is no coincidence, again. Uh, what you can notice here is that, uh, oh, sorry, I need to comment this out. Uh, what you would notice here that the, the type here is an array, and this is like a Java array. You can see it by the, judge it by the toString method and its output. So if you want, it, want, want to have it in some more readable fashion, you can add to set, for example, here. Yeah, and that's, that's what we would expect. It's nice and readable. So now getting back to our case uh, for, uh, with a safe variant of, uh, of fetching the value by name. Well, the way to do this is uh, adding a companion object because again, uh, in, in this case, enum behaves like a class. So a class can have a companion object and so can, have any, so can an enum. Uh, so we can uh, have an object direction here, and uh, we'll call the method. Well, of course, naming is hard. Uh, here we can decide to follow the direction of, uh, of value of. So let's call it save value of. Uh, it takes a name that is a string. And we are using exactly the same approach that we used in, uh, in our implementation with ADTs. Uh, so we are going to use the built-in try. Uh, then we'll say direction uh, value of. One thing you can notice here is that uh, IntelliJ is uh, that the Scala plugin is still not perfect because once I implemented the companion object here, it stopped uh, auto-completing the value of and values method, and I I only noticed it after some time, and I, I actually noticed that un unless you, if you don't have this companion object, it works, but if you add this companion object, it doesn't work. But we already know that the value of method is here, is there, so we can use it. Uh, so we are putting name here to option. Here we are changing to save value of. Yeah, and it's there. So we got a none, which is again expected. So again, going through our checklist, we can see that almost everything is covered. So we have parameters, so some kind of internal state for the enum. Uh, we have exhaustiveness check at compile time, which gives us uh, some hints whether we covered all the cases or not. Uh, we have a way to find the value by name. We have a way to find all values. The only thing that was missing that we needed to um, implement ourselves is a safer way to, to, give a, to, to, to fetch a value by name, which would return an option instead of throwing an exception if something does not exist. So this is like almost as perfect as the enumeratum implementation. The, one of the main advantages is that this is built in, so you don't need to bring uh, some external library to your project. And uh, another nice advantage uh, of this implementation is that uh, it can interrupt with your Java code. So 
I have a piece of Java code here that, uh, that tries to interact with this. So what it does, it, uh, it tries to first of all do an instance check whether a, f a value of the direction enum is actually a Java lang enum. So the thing that you have here, this is a Java lang enum. And then we are trying to, to use the, the values method to, to print it. But it doesn't work yet. And this is expected, fortunately. Uh, for this to work, uh, we need to do one or actually two additional things. First of all, we need to extend the, the Java enum type. So now we are, we are using, this is the Java lang enum, not, not something coming from, from enumeratum. And this is uh, parameterized by the, by the direction. And one more thing, which is a bit tricky here, is that we need to, to add a val here. And the reason is that we want to access the bearing externally, so it needs to be there. The question is why don't we need to add a val to a name? And the, the reason is that uh, if you look at the Java lang enum, you can see that it already has a name field and, this, and, and it has accessor methods for the name. So this is why it would, if there was something else, something with a different name than name, pun not intended, uh, then you would need to add a val here as well to be able to use it externally from Java. And here this is kind of an edge case, but yeah, so you, can, you need to put the name, the val in one place. And now you can see that it works, so the instance check returned true. Uh, we were able to, to list all the values from an enum, we were able to access the fields that were defined. So apart from, uh, from all the items from our checklist, uh, apart from the safe way to fetch a value by, by name, uh, we also get the interop with Java for free, which is nice because, well, it might be useful at some point. So, looking back at the entire journey we took, like we, we started with, uh, with what we had in Scala 2, the default way with the enumeration, which was missing a lot of things. Then we tried to improve uh, this with ADTs, and ADTs were, were nice, but we needed to add some boilerplate to be able to obtain the values by name or get all the values. Uh, those boilerplate was uh, added by an external library in the next approach, so Enumeratum helped us do this, so that we don't, didn't need to write the code ourselves, and then we switched to Scala 3, so something that is eventually here. And this is like an almost perfect enum implementation with almost all the features that we might require, plus Java interop, almost for free, because, uh, because an enum in Scala is also the, the Java enum, as you can see here. Okay. So that's all I had. If you have any questions, the timer tells me we still have two minutes, so feel free. Thanks. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, so firstly, um, yeah, uh, the lookup enum, uh, sorry, lookup by name. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, do you think it seems a bit like an anti-pattern uh, to, to, to be matching strings, uh, casting strings to enums is like you, you, are, you are doing reflection which uh, defeats the purpose of uh, using enum in the first place. Um, yeah, and uh, what's your advice on like best practices regarding that? And uh, yeah, second question is uh, you discussed at length about the um, the improvements of uh, of enum in a uh, Scala three, mm -hmm. but yeah, or yeah, what's not covered in Scala two? That's in Scala three. But uh, what what do you think is covered in Scala two with regarding enums? Uh, some good characteristics of enums in Scala two. Thanks. Yeah. So starting with the first question, whether it's like an anti pattern or not to, to 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 use strings when we actually want to use enums, so we have like want to have a type safe enumeration. Well, normally I think you, you would just use the enum, and I th like the, the, the only use case I can think of now, I don't say that there are no others, is, the, is the, the, the one that I mentioned, which is deserialization from, I don't know, you, can, you, can, you, you might need to deserialize from JSON that is coming to your API, you might need to deserialize from a database, and those are the cases where you need to have it covered, and then if you want to still do this in like a type safe fashion, I think the approach with option is, is, is more useful because, well, you can approach it in a functional way. So that's, uh, that, that, that's the use case I can imagine. But normally, of course, I would advise to, to be as type safe as possible since we are in a strongly typed language. So mm, strings are like for the, let's say, edges of our system. So either an API call or a database read or write, something like that. Uh, and the other question was about uh, what uh, Scala 2 has to offer, right? So, so Scala 2, well, 
it, 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 the, the default implementation, as I, as, as I sh showed you, is not, not perfect. So uh, in my experience, I was mostly using uh, enumeratum because it, it gives you like all the, all the possibilities. And uh, like if you, if you think about using an enum, I think the checklist is pretty, pretty comprehensive, the, the one we use, and I would say those are the, the most common use cases. So if using Scala 2, and if you, are, if you not, don't fear external libraries because some people want to use vanilla Scala and then probably ADTs are the, the best approach, if you are not that pure, so if you are able to use an external library, then I would recommend enumeratum. But that's an like, opinionated advice, probably, so you might have different ones. Okay, and uh, we are out of time, so Jacek, thank you Thanks very much. If you have any more questions, I'm here for the rest of the conference. Thanks a lot.